Hey fellow YouTubers, welcome back to Land of the Wombats. It's your bad old Uncle Chris here again to share some off-grid pirate lifestyle stories. Now last week, these two olive trees, which are about maybe 20, 25 years old, were pruned um, and it was a pretty significant job. The reason we pruned them, because up behind me on the roof are eight solar panels and they're connected to the house batteries and they provide charging to the batteries at this time of year, in fact actually every day of the year. Now the olive trees were overshadowing them because they'd grown so massive and we had to cut them back. So that's on last week's video. But roof space in Australia is quite valuable real estate because not only do we collect electricity from the roof space, we also collect water. So any rain that falls onto that roof is stored, is captured, sorry, and stored in water tanks that sits behind this shed. So how it works is quite simple, really. We have on the edge of the steel roof, we have a gutter. Now that's like just a, a zinc loom channel that is permanently attached to the side of the, the shed. And it flows down into a, a hole in the, the guttering called a pop. And a pop is basically just a, tube, a metal tube that falls um, like a hole out of the guttering. Now if you come around here, I'll show you. The drains themselves are directly up above me. And they are sturdy, UV stable, PVC pipes super strong stuff, very, very long life. They're locally made and they're cemented together so that there are no leaks. So they're quite, quite amazing technology really. And the water rolls off the rainfall, hits the roof, slides down the roof, rolls into the gutter, down in through the pop and then into the plastic water channels. And then it works its way over to the tank. So let's go over and have a look at that. Now the water flows through the pipes and eventually gets dumped into this plastic monster behind me. It's uh, made from polyethylene, so it's a great material. It's got a pretty long life. Um, very, very tough plastic. And believe it or not, this water tank only holds about 8,000 litres. That's about over 2,000 US gallons and it's quite a lot of water though but it's not as much as you think. Now when this tank is filled up the water exits through a pipe and it goes down the hill where we're installing two more 11,000 litre water tanks and you can't see the pipes because they sit underground and um, yeah so we hopefully will get those tanks in before summer and hopefully they get full with the rain. It's, although it's been a bit of a dry year so far. We're looking at about um, 200 mils of rain so far, which is pretty below average, I would suggest. And if you have a look over here, the water gets into the tanks via a, what is known locally as a wet system. So these pipes are actually sealed. It's a sealed system but they hold water and gravity actually just pushes water down. So as new water goes in, the old water flows out into the tank. And you can see that uh, the pipe is supported along the, the, or the weight of the pipe because it, it contains quite a lot of water, is supported by the steel rock gabions we've got here and they sit at the front. So we had to make a, a little adjustment. Now, when we installed these pipes a couple of days ago, we actually ran out of bits, as you do. Um, it's always hard to know exactly how many pieces you're going to go through. Now, we had this uh, bend here, which is quite um, was a difficult thing to work around because the, the pipe runs along the front of this gabion. But then the next gabion series is slightly lower and a little bit further downhill. So we've got this uh, 
bend here, but then we have to also now duplicate that bend to go down and around so that the full weight of the pipe is supported by the um, steel rock gabion cages. Because at the moment, it's kind of sitting in the air a bit, topped up with, supported by these chocks, but it's not ideal because the pipe will bend and sag, especially as it gets hot over summer. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have seen how these pipes work, but they're quite amazing. To do that arrangement, you've got these two 45 degree angles and they're both with female couplings at the end. And all we need to do is duplicate or create a section like that. And what, what connects them up is just a, a set of a um, spare chunk of 90 mil UPVC. And these, basically, this is a female coupling, that sits in there, that sits in there, and you just cut it to length, so it'll be like that. Obviously, it'll sit a bit higher. The cement is actually quite an amazing system. It uh, contains, it's a two-part glue, and the first part is the horrific-looking priming fluid. I know, used to know a plumber, he used to put this on his saws. I think that's wrong, but, you know, he must have known what he's doing. And then once that primer is dried, it cleans and um, gets the gets the PVC ready for uh, the cement. You put on this disgusting stuff called blue goo, and that's actually what it's called, blue glue. And it's um, quite a viscous sort of um, blue material, and it sets very, very fast. So you have like 30 seconds to get it right. And once that's set, this baby does not leak. <laughs> it's some truly amazing stuff. Yeah, so we'll do that over the next couple of days. Just ran out of time and had to go down and get um, the plumbing bits at the hardware store. So yeah, but this stuff is super easy to deal with. Anyone can do it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next week.